Hi guys. So it's Sarah from Sojourn Psychology. And one thing we know is that things continue to change, change and change and change. However, us as people, we kind of stay the same. That's why psychology, neurology, biology, these, these scientific approaches to understanding humanity work. And one truth that fits into this is emotion and our emotion life. Now, typically when we talk about emotions, uh, we might say, okay, there's, there's a broad spectrum. We can feel more than one feeling at one time. We tend to have an emotion that shows up in the forefront or what we call a secondary emotion that it's showing, showing, showing. Then we have more of a primary emotion that's deeper, more vulnerable, more rooted in our attachment fears and our attachment needs our trauma experience, our fractured relationships, our hurts, our sorrows. So there's complexity with emotion. And when we talk about emotion life, sometimes the secondary emotion, the surface emotion, the above the surface stuff, although it gets attention, it can get the wrong attention, it can get misunderstood, and it can get downplayed. But the emotion that's showing up on the surface is actually super important. And it's good to take pause to consider, what do we do about this? This important emotional expression that's showing up in our world. It's connected to the behaviors that we automatically fall into. You know, when our big feelings are on the surface, um, our behavioral choices often aren't choices anymore, they're automatic. And that can really get us into trouble in our relationships, trouble in our environment, get us feeling shame, blame, humiliation, because why did I do that? So our secondary emotions, the emotion on the surface are pretty important. They're important to understand and they're important to value. Now, when we can name it, we can tame it. So one of the first things we want to do when we're coming alongside of somebody who's struggling with big feelings is to help them name it. Or for me, I want to struggle <laughs> to name it for myself. You want to struggle to name it for yourself, to slow down. It's hard to slow down when we're feeling big. Slowing ourselves down, helping our people to slow it down, our children, our loved ones, let's slow it down. And let's take time to name this feeling that's really showing up. Sometimes I think of it like this thing, if you put your fist in front of your face, gets in my vision. My feelings are throwing a temper tantrum and it's hard for me to see anything else. So of course, then my behavior is influenced by that. If my feelings are in the way of my vision, it's hard for me to behave in a way that's going to foster growth and communication. And there are many times when that, that intense emotion is actually justified. There's a place for anger and there's a place where anger is going to obscure our vision. And the more we can make sense of it, the more that we can have somebody come alongside of us or we can hopefully eventually come alongside of ourselves, the more we can help to honor that emotion that's closer to the surface or on the surface. The more we can honor it, the more we can make sense of it, the more we can tame it. And as we tame our emotion or as we have a dialogue with it, hey there, feelings, you know, what's your name? How you doing? What's going on? Sounds a little silly, but our feelings are really just trying to help us out. If something bad has happened to us in the past or in the present, this feeling shows up because it's just really trying to help us, each one of us, me as a person. My feelings are trying to help me as a person to navigate the situation I'm living in. And if I can notice it, if I can have a dialogue with it, if I can try to move it out of my vision and say, let's talk. How are you doing? What's your name? What do you want to talk about here? Where are you coming from? Okay, let's talk this through. Let's make sense of it. Whether I'm doing that with myself, I'm doing that with another person, or somebody is coming to do that with me, those are ways to really name, tame, honor our emotion. And the more we can make sense of that surfacey emotion, it's going to connect into the more vulnerable primary emotion, the deeper 
probably trauma, whether it's big T trauma or little t trauma stuff. There's a hurt deep down. There's the deeper down hurt. And then there's this one. This one, it needs to be honored too. It's valuable. It's there for a reason. And as we honor that emotion that's showing up, we can shift it. So the more we notice it, the more we honor it, the more we talk to our feelings, the more we make sense of it. This is all that self-talk, all that inner dialogue stuff that I'm sure you've heard of if you talk to a psychologist at any point in your life or any people helper. Okay, you guys, so it's really, really important to allow our feelings to exist, to have dialogue with them. The more we aim to understand our feelings, the more we can understand ourselves, the more we understand our feelings and ourselves, the more we can find ways to shift our feelings, to make sense of our feelings, to give them a place in the story of what is just happening in this moment, what has been happening in our story, and what has been happening for us historically, because all of those things are very valuable, and they all deserve to be honored. All right, you guys, I'm listening. I'm listening to myself, and I'm listening to the people around me. Please do slow down. Please do listen. Let's listen to people. Okay, guys, let's listen to our feelings.